ChatGPT has released its new feature, the code interpreter, recently. I tried the new feature this morning and I found it's very impressive. Although the name is code interpreter, you can use that to do the data analysis, document analysis, visualize your data, and interpret your code, of course. You can even ask ChatGPT to do the code improvement for you. In this video, I would like to share you a few exciting features I have discovered and I think they can improve your productivity significantly. So let's get started. The very first thing you will do is to turn the feature on. And in the left bottom corner, there's a ellipsis here, and you click that in the settings, we click that, and in the beta features, um, there is a toggle here called the code interpreter, and you should have that turned on. That's the very first thing you will do. Once you have that toggle turned on, um, when you start a new session, you can select the chat GPT and uh, using the code interpreter is marked as a beta here. So whenever, and you will notice there is a plus button here, you can upload files. That's making it super powerful. So you can upload different types of data here. It can be a document, it's a text file, Microsoft Word document. Um, you can use PDF as well. So I will use some public data here to demonstrate the feature and you can feel free to use your own data. So I'm currently renting a house. So I'm pretty interested in the rental market at the moment. So let's say I want to compare the um, regional versus the capital city uh, rental. So this website has already got some visualizations, but I don't want to use any of them. And instead, I will download these table to CSV files. And the data is pretty much like this. Um, it's not a huge amount of data, but it should be enough for us to demonstrate the, uh, the features here. So let's try to ask the chat GPT to analyze this because it's purely uh, a data or a table and I, I don't want to read it. Uh, let's do that with chat GPT. So the first thing is, of course, upload the file. So let's do that uh, in the download, we upload this file. And uh, once it's uploaded, we can say, please um, analysis the data and show me the top 10 or top five takeaways. All right, so as you can see, it's starting working and you can um, see what is happening under the hood, but we probably don't care about too much about the details, so we can collapse that. And uh, you can see that it's saying, it appears that was a minor formatting issue and it will try to fix that. And then it tried to interpret the data and um, the, it will list the top five takeaways for us. Let's have a look at what is the app. You can see that it has a beautiful chart already for us. And then it give us a few takeaways. The overall trend, highest average inflation, lowest uh, maximum minimum. That is impressive, right? Like the data, the tablet data is like this. And uh, it's very interesting that it can get some insight out of your raw data. And it can give you a beautiful chart and uh, showing the, uh, the annual rain inflation by distance to CBD. And uh, actually, if you look at the chart here, it's pretty uh, close, right? And this is about analysis and interpret the data. Let's try another one. So I would like to visualize and analysis the uh, earthquakes all over the world. So based on magnitude, the data will be past 20, uh, 30 days, the worldwide. And uh, I want the format to be a CSV and the newest first. And uh, then I would like to do a search. So it will um, download the uh, the result into a, a CSV again. So if you look at the CSV, uh, it's quite loud and in, in different regions. So let's try to ask ChatGPT to analyze that data for us. So let's do the uh, query one, analysis the earthquake data for me, uh, visualize it into four different um, types of graph um, and list the in the top five insights for me right 
uh, it will firstly interpret what the uh, the information is. Um, that is very impressive because I don't even know what the column mean. Uh, okay, it will generate four different uh, visualizations and look at that. So within just a few seconds, it generates a list of charts. I don't think this one particularly making any sense, but yeah, as you can see here, it's very interesting. It's there are something already makes sense. The uh, magnitude uh, distributions, um, the common squeak uh, magnitude is four point five, and uh, it's had a geographic distributions. Uh, it doesn't have a map, but you can see it's the latitude and the latitude mapping here. We probably can ask it to. Uh, Please, please visualize the Earth's quicks uh, on top of a map, a globe map, maybe. Um, yeah, let's see how it goes. And boom, you can see the final result like so. And you can see there are a lot of earthquakes here, here, in uh, um, Indonesia, I guess, the uh, New Zealand. And uh, the chart has this title, it has the depths and uh, the geolocation as well. That is super impressive, right? The next thing I would like to demonstrate is to pass a book. So recently I have read a book about CICD from commit to de deployment. And I have already created a document, uh, which is a Word document. Let's say pass the book and give me a um, summary. Show me who should read the book and the key features of the book. I will just give a very simple instruction. The book discusses the complexities and uncertainties inherent in software development. And it emphasizes the importance of gaining confidence in software behavior before release and the efficiency of being able to roll back to previous version when the problem arises. Uh, that's exactly what the book about and who should read the book. So it shows three different target audience, the software developers, the project manager. Okay, I'm not sure if that really uh, fit to that category and DevOps professionals. Yeah, I think it, that makes sense. And the key feature of the book is practical guidance. I think, yeah, it is making sense. Comprehensive courage, focus on the effect and quality. I think it makes sense. Maybe I can ask him, can you give me some suggestions to make it more uh, user-friendly? Okay, use clean and simple language. Include visuals, real-life examples, hands-on exercises, summary key points. That's great. Uh, okay, glor okay, glossary. That's cool. Um, current feedback. That is great. Cool. I want you to, to create some um, post for me and I can share that in a social media. So let's ask ChatGPT to create a uh, word cloud um, of the book. So in the book, I have introduced a example that we are building an application, uh, the code of the day. So that's why the code is the most uh, frequent one it found. And it also has some like testing, uh, the code, uh, Cypress, um, and the application. Skip the following um, words when generate the word cloud. Um, I don't want the code to be there. And uh, I don't think the file to be, need to be there as well. And the first, uh, also skip the typical stop words, uh, typical stop words. Um, let's give it another try. Okay, cool. I guess this time it makes more sense. And uh, that looks great. And if you want to download that, open it in a new tab and it can download that file for you. But I found it's very interesting. It doesn't have the extension, so you probably will need to add a PNG at the end of the file, so you can use that file in a social media. You can also ask ChatGPT to resize the file, and let's say crop the image to a square. 
don't shrink or strange. And yeah, it has that beautiful file. All right, that's pretty much about today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what you think in the comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.